Hey, welcome to this week's sermon commentary. My name is Chanae. And I'm Vito. And really, this is a time and a space where we get to expand on some of the truths and thoughts that were brought up and discussed in this week's message. So we hope you enjoy. Imagining there's this person who also started to learn Italian at the same day as I did. But this person, you know, a bit lazy and he just do one lesson per day. One lesson per day, but he's continuing it day after day after day. And that person could have, could continue his streak. And I did 45 minutes an hour each day. And just by losing one day, I lost my streak. And it's all because I'm having a hard time seeing the significance of the small things having a hard time saying why would do a, just spend a little amount of time would mean for me. Mm, having a hard time seeing the significance in the small things. Yeah. Dito, why do you think we have a hard time seeing the significance of the small things? I think it's just because us humans, we're so used to going, going for the goal, right? Going for the end line. And we just want to get things done that we're so tunneled vision on, on that end goal that we miss the, the things that are around us. And it's fine if, it's, if those things are things. The problem is most of the times those things are people that we have to reach out to, that we could say hi to, that we could, you know, minister to. And we miss yeah. those opportunities so much just because we focusing on, we're focusing on that one thing in our day. Yeah. What do you think? Mm, I really feel like oftentimes we're preoccupied with the shiny things, like the things that seem big, right? The grand gestures, the things that are like really show someone who we are. Well, at least that's what we think, right? And we kind of go after them and it, I, I think it makes us feel of worth. Like we've done something great. Like we've done something good that people can see. Um, Cause we see that all the time in our world today, yeah. right? These yeah. things, and those are the people that are praised, that make those big things that have, um, that are seen as having a big impact in something. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes just the normal mundane things that we do in life get kind of pushed to the side like they're worthless or they're not really important. Yeah. But what's crazy is actually our life is made up of tiny moments. That is our life. Mm -hmm. Only certain things are the big high thing, high points or the things that we celebrate, but actually our life is made up of all of these tiny, mundane, normal moments. Yeah. And so we have this opportunity to kind of, like you said, a streak, string all those tiny, seemingly insignificant moments and things together to make a huge impact. That is so true. And I don't know about you, you're married. Yeah, I am. I'm married. Some of you watching are not married, but I often see this because I get to sit down with couples and people will kind of feel like, well, I've made a big grand gesture. Maybe it's like a big gift yeah. on their birthday or on Christmas. And all the rest of the year, it's kind of like the person doesn't exist and they don't really show their love yeah. right, on a daily basis. These small things and gestures that you can do to really show that you love someone, mm -hmm. putting it into action, mm -hmm. right? Choosing them every day um, and to show them. And so you'll see this grand gesture, but more often than not, the healthier relationships are yeah. ones that choose to show up every day, every day and to show their partner that they love them in all these small ways. And as you do that, it it builds and it grows and this relationship or marriage or anything else grows into something solid. When you think about the building blocks of our society, even when you think of a brick, right? How do we build? We build brick by brick, by brick by brick. And pretty soon you have a whole wall or a whole building yeah. or you know whatever it looks like. But each one of those bricks is important. Each one of those small things is important. And I think sometimes we just bypass and we just do not think whether it's tunnel vision or whether we just are like, that doesn't matter. That seems boring. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I why would I say hi? 
why why would I wait for this conversation? I have somewhere to go. It doesn't seem important, right? Right? It doesn't seem important. But really, when I think about God and his character, he sees the importance in each one of those. He counts the cares, hairs on our head. Yeah. That is a detailed God, right? Mm-hmm. That, that actually, he listens to every conversation. He, he knows what our thoughts are. You know, he doesn't turn that off. He shows up every day in every moment, not just the good ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's there when we're a mess and we're talking crazy, right? And he shows up and he's there. And when I think of that, his character, just who he is, that's what his kingdom is made up of. That's what it looks like, that it sees the importance in those things. And as we kind of string those things together and we show up day after day and we allow his kingdom to be present and visible in our lives, even in the smallest ways, Mm -hmm. well, those things make big impact in a society and in a world that looks totally different. So when I think of just what his kingdom is, I can see it present and really able to permeate and make big impact on a daily basis and be able to grow and expand and build on all of these small moments that seem seemingly insignificant, but have gigantic impact. Then Jesus said, what is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree and birds make nests in its branches. That's it, that was the first parable. And here goes the second parable in verse 20. He also asked, what else is the kingdom of God like? It is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. So cool. I feel like both these parables, Yeah, I love them that really you good. chose them to preach out of. I mean, I know we're in this series, but I there's something so cool about parables because they really do break down things that are not easy for us to see. Yeah. Right? So it breaks them down using things that we can see mm-hmm. that are more obvious to us. And I love that about parables because yeah. I'm like, can, thank you. Can you break it down for me? Can you <laughs> make it more understandable? And Jesus knew that, yeah. right? And I love how he uses parables to really meet people where they're at. So I just love that about it, that he's always trying to meet us where we're at. And we see it fleshed out in his word when we we see him as he was alive on earth. Absolutely. We see it fleshed out over and over, him meeting people yeah. where they're at. Yeah, and, and not only that, but these two parables are targeting two different like groups, right? Yeah. The first one, he's talking to the men yeah. who's probably doing agri- agriculture back then, right? So those people are doing agriculture and, and you know, he's addressing this man, trying to des- describe this concept. Yeah. But then he also was talking about the women who baked and cooked, mm-hmm. who's just serving their house with food with the second parable. And this was not a common thing back then. Remember uh, when Jesus was feeding 5,000 people, right? Yeah. It's not actually 5,000 people. It's just 5,000 men. Yes. So that's how the, the writer was writing this about, because that, that's how they used to record things. This is recording uh, about the man. It's you're very male focused, yeah. right? But here, Jesus directly addressing the men and the women. Uh, when he's addressing the men, he's talking about the, the little seed. And when he's addressing the women, he's talking about the yeast and the flour making bread. Yeah. And there's also something that's very interesting. Uh, I, I love that this, I love the first one, but I really love the second one because he said that it's three measures of flour, right? Mm-hmm. That is a huge amount of flour. Yeah. That's, a, that's not, that is not the amount of flour that you would use if you just want to feed your, your home, your family. That's the amount of flour that you want to use, when you use to feed a lot of people. One of the commenters that I read about this uh, is saying that three measures of flour uh, at that time is about eight and a half gallons for, oh, wow. for yeah of flour. Oh my goodness. And that's 38 liters of flour. It's a lot. Crazy. And also that's, there's this, 
interesting <laughs> website called the Bread Monk, right? <laughs> it's like the just the website is about baking and breads. Mm. But interestingly, this this person is breaking down this first. So uh, this person said that the three measures of flour it's enough to create fifty two loaves of bread, each weighing a pound and a half. Whoa. That is enough to create 416 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Wow. A lot That's of bread. a lot of bread. PB&J. <laughs> a lot of PB&J. Yeah. It's incredible. I think Jesus is trying to say that, you know, it's from this just little bit of yeast, you can feed lots and lots of people. Yeah. And it's amazing. And he's trying to describe this this bigness that, that the kingdom of God yeah. will be. And this is the cr- the crazy thing when I think about it is just the expansion of his kingdom, mm. right? So everything about <laughs> his kingdom coming to earth, like it just looks, it looks different than anyone thought, yeah. right? But people were expecting the king and the salvation to look different. Shiny. Right to come, yeah, shiny. I don't know, lots of trumpets. <laughs> it's like whatever yeah. it's gonna look like the kings of that day at that mm-hmm. time, and for his kingdom to be established and to look like the kingdoms of that day. Yeah, and his kingdom is ushered in in a totally different way. Yeah, and not only that, now his church is being established. In a totally different way. Yeah. Here's Jesus, it seems from very small beginnings, is representing him himself, a carpenter Mm -hmm. of trade, right? Nothing flashy. Nothing flashy. Right? Is coming in and showing his kingdom daily through the outworking of what he does, through his life. Exactly. Establishing his kingdom. Yeah. Doing things, um, small things, moment by moment, day by day, that are not normal for that day are not seen as things that you're, that really should be done or a king should be doing Mm -hmm. or a kingdom or the kingdom should be doing. He's showing love in all different kinds of ways. You know what I mean? And no one is kind of pushed on the outside of this. Men, women, and children. If we look at it from the expansion of the kingdom of God, right? Or the expansion of the church, we see it expanding. We've seen from very small beginnings, seemingly insignificant beginnings, we've seen the church grow and grow and grow. We've seen his kingdom expand and be very impactful Mm -hmm. in the world today throughout thousands of years, right? So we see it. It it, it happened. happened. When you think from something small came something huge, right? That is life-changing for all individuals. Absolutely. The whole time. From the beginning, God is trying to change the way we think about the kingdom of heaven, yes. right? the kingdom of God. The whole time from the, the moment he was born in a manger, from a carpenter, yep. we're, he's trying to change the way we think, the, the way our minds work, the way we imagine about mm-hmm. what the kingdom of God looks like. He's trying to change the way we think about the small things that yeah. you, know, you don't only have to Focus on the big flashy yep. gesture, but you we, by using the small things, you can actually building the kingdom of God. Yeah, and that's huge, right? Because that means the worst thing that we could do mm-hmm. as a believer of God is to just settle with one way of thinking. Yeah, that we know is true, and we just close our eyes and we just don't yeah. want to hear about the new things that God wants to introduce to us. Yeah. That's so true, Dito. Dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> Especially when I'm like, how could we ever limit God? Yeah. Because every uh, he's so huge. And also, this smallest part of him is profoundly more profound than yeah, anything nice. that I, yeah. I would come up with or see, right? He's just the almighty, huge, incredible, amazing. God's kingdom, it's, it's something that's carried out in all parts of our life. Mm-hmm. That's something that Jesus showed us. It is the expansion of his kingdom when we talk about this. Yeah. But how is that done? Mm-hmm. It's through, it's done every day. Every day. Showing up, surrendering, and saying, 
okay, God, this one small thing is important to you. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be important to me. Because when you do these things to someone, they would feel that they are loved. They would feel comfort in their hearts. They would feel joyful. And they would feel peaceful. You know, try to think about this for a second. You know what you would feel in the kingdom of heaven, in God's kingdom. You would feel you are loved. You would feel comfort. You would feel joyful and you would feel peaceful. I definitely feel all those things. And I'm so yeah. thankful. I'm so, so thankful to have God in my life and just getting to see this different kingdom and what it looks like and what it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important for us to remember that we are a part of the expansion. Yeah. So talking about yeast and expanding and growing or a mustard seed growing into a large tree, like this, we get to be a part of that. What started out, Jesus coming here to earth, showing us what his kingdom looks like fleshed out in the everyday. Now, thousands of years later, we're still a part of this expansion here on earth, mm -hmm. which is amazing and something that I think when we can really remember that every day we wake up, yeah. it'll make all the difference. Absolutely, right? And and sometimes we tend to think that the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, it's it's something that we will go to when we die, right? And we go to heaven. Mm. But I think the invitation here is Jesus trying to say to us that you know you can feel the kingdom, you can feel my kingdom right here, right now, and you can be a part of it right here, right now, to make the people around you to be able to feel what it feels like in yeah. the kingdom of God. Yeah. I think that's so important. Yeah, so, so important. Dito, have you ever been to like a really great party or event? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. How did you feel about it? Uh, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like I had a great time. I feel like I'm loved, surrounded by people that love me. Yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. And I feel like a great event will kind of do that. It's a moment in time. There's multiple moments in time where I can go back to and it's almost like experience them again because they made such a huge impact on my yeah, life. Yeah. And I've been to a few really great events um, or parties. and But one, I will continue to go back for the rest of my life because it made such a big impact and it was just so beautiful. And it was so intentional. And this was a wedding mm -hmm. that I got to experience. But from the moment we we got to the place where this wedding was going to be held, over a period of days, I feel like I was ushered into another world wow. <laughs> that I had never experienced, where I'd never seen anything like it. I was so just taken back and in awe of all the details and intentionality that this couple had put into preparing this wedding to make every part of it so beautiful. From the, from the invitations to the greeting when people welcome, welcomed us to the venue and the event, to our stay, to the small gifts that they would leave, to the smells. That's and amazing. No, and the, the decor wow. and just the ambiance of, of every day and every night leading up to this wedding that wasn't even the wedding yet. <laughs> and then when it gets to this wedding, I just will remember it forever because it was so beautiful having the people around. Everyone was having this incredible time. We had our kids with us. It's like we were... We got to experience something that we had never experienced before, but it showed me and opened up this world and this this beautiful place and this this time. And it really, I felt so taken care of. I felt so seen and known, even though I didn't know most of the people there. We knew the couple, but it was it was super impactful. And I think about it. I'll probably dream about it for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, but that's really what we get to do on a daily basis is it's in these details. Exactly. It's yeah. in these small moments and things, just like we've been talking about the, the building blocks of life. Mm -hmm. But we get to allow someone and show someone 
and allow them to experience the beauty of God's kingdom, the beauty of his church, the beauty of who he is and what he is all about. We have the opportunity to do that in our lives every single day. There's not one day that we should write off and say that was a throwaway day. Yeah. Because God doesn't see any days as throwaway days, mm -hmm. right? He puts breath in our lungs for a reason. Absolutely. He gives us moments for a reason. He gives us time, mm -hmm. right? People around us yeah. for a reason, mm -hmm. places. All of these things are so intentional. That's who our God is. So why would we ever think that the small things aren't significant. And it's, his kingdom is built on it. Yeah. It's upside down. It's totally different than what we see out here and experience in this world. That's what we get to be a part of every single day. So today or tomorrow or sometime during this week, when we're out and about in this world, I want us to think about that. I want us to wake up and think about the fact that people are gonna get to experience Jesus. Yeah. People are going to get to experience what our God's kingdom is all about, what it looks like. It's inclusivity, mm -hmm. right? It's acceptance. It's love. It's lack of shame. All of these beautiful things that we experience on, a, on the daily, that the opposite of these things ruin people's lives. Yeah. Lack of love. Everyone's searching for it. Mm -hmm. Some people are, are searching and can't find it. And, and it's evident in their life how it's affected them, yeah. right? People living in shame, people feeling unseen, right? And not known and not cared for, it affects their whole life, right? People feeling like they, they don't have a home or that they don't know what kindness looks like or they don't know what a father looks like. This is something that our God can offer to everyone, right? Yeah. They can experience all of these things, the abundance of them in his kingdom through who he is. Yeah. And if we accept, I guess, the, the, the challenge of surrendering and saying, man, I'm going to let every part of my life shine who you are. They're going to get to see that in your smile. They're going to get to see that in the I love you, in the conversation, in the way you listen to people. They're gonna to get to experience that in the way you quickly ask for forgiveness, in the way you are thoughtful in so many different ways, where the things that you remember, and maybe you do send a small gift, right? Yeah. Or maybe you call them up, the way you show up. Mm -hmm. All of these things are gonna be different ways that are gonna to continue to expand in a, and see this kingdom established here and bringing people into it. It's gonna bring people in. And I don't know about you, Dito, but that is what I want. Exactly, that is so I want good. people with me. I don't yeah. want it to be like, well, I'm just caring about me. No, I, I love being with people, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. love experiencing good food with people. And so why would I not want to experience the abundance of who our God is? Yeah. And, and his kingdom with other people. I want that and I'm an introvert. <laughs> exactly. Right? Introvert, extrovert. No one, no one is excluded. No yeah. one's excluded. And you, if you think you're off the hook with her because you're on lockdown, guess what? You're not. Because yeah. you still have, you can still WhatsApp people, you can still Zoom people, you can spread God's love through those meetings. Oh, sure. You can be kind within your house with all your family members that you see every single day for yeah. hours at a time, right? Mm -hmm. You can extend patience. There is a lot of different ways. So no, nothing's excluded. No time frame, no set of time, no season. Yeah. God's everywhere all the time. And I love that. I love that so much. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's sermon commentary. And we really do hope you enjoyed it. We love having you here with us. Really, our prayer is that you would have some time during your own week to really think through and ponder some of the truths that God may be wanting to speak to you. We'll see you again next time.